Hey everybody, and welcome to I Do Everyday Automation, where we will talk about everyday automation projects to make your home smarter and your life easier. Today, we will be talking about the Ratio Smart Sprinkler Controller. How to set it up, once it's configured, we'll go to the website and I'll show you some of the features that makes this better than your everyday average sprinkler system. So here we have the Ratio Generation 2 16 zone sprinkler controller. They have these in both Generation 2 and Generation 3 with both 8 and 16 zone configurations. Although I only have 8 zones here at my house, this guy was on sale for $80 off during Amazon Prime days. So obviously I couldn't pass that up. So here in the box we have the controller, a little quick start guide that we probably won't use. We have the mounting screws, and below that, we have the power supply. I was actually pretty surprised that there was no mounting template, but I'll show you a quick way around that here shortly. Okay, so make sure to take good pictures. This will go a long way with doing the install of the new unit or in case you have to put the old unit back in for some reason. So my original unit was a Hunter Irrigation model XC800i. This model was pretty much analog in every way with the exception to the Casio calculator watch screen. It was difficult to program even for someone like myself and reminded me of a VCR from the 1980s. So right now I'm uninstalling the old unit, making sure to disconnect the power from the unit and using my cell phone to make sure I note where my common wire and my different zones go. These wires are predominantly signal wires that provide a low voltage signal to the pumps telling them to send water to the sprinkler heads. Most of the wires are different colors, so this makes it easy to reference when you go back and look at the pictures. Okay, so if your box didn't include a template, any piece of cardboard bigger than your device will do. Cardboard is also better than using the paper template that are usually supplied with these types of devices. You can even reuse a side of your TV bracket box to help with mounting your TV in most cases, especially when you don't have a second set of hands or a laser level. Okay, so right now, basically, I'm just using the cardboard and the screws to punch little pilot holes in the wall. Then I'm going to come back with my drill and drill them out. And now I have three perfect holes at the bottom for where the sheetrock adapters go. And now I'm just going to loosely screw these guys in. And I'm sorry guys, I, I realized that the, uh, the control unit was a little crooked, so after this I'm going to straighten it out. There we go, that's better. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and sort my wires out using my picture as a guide like I mentioned before. making sure they're all long enough. Then I'm gonna pass them through the controller. And from here, we're just gonna loosely screw these guys in. And then from here, we can start to patch the wires into the different spots where they go. Again, we're gonna reference our handy dandy cell phone or whatever device you use to take a picture, tablet, or even if you have an old school Polaroid, that'll work too. Okay, so while that's going, we're gonna go ahead and fire up our cell phone or tablet and download the app from the Google Play Store or from the Apple App Store. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and secure the controller now that we have all of our wires in place. And since the app's ready to go, we'll go ahead and plug it up, fire it up, and start to log in. Okay, so I already have an account, so I'm just gonna put in my username and password here. 
obviously I'm gonna block it out so you guys don't log in and turn my sprinklers on tonight you may have to go in and create an account if you don't already have a ratio account All right, we're just gonna allow it to set the location. And then it's gonna ask you for your personal information. Then you scan the barcode on the device and then it's gonna ask you to connect to the Wi-Fi. You just type in your Wi-Fi password and hit next. All right, now it's adding the ratio controller as you can see. Once you get that blinking light, that means it's connected. You'll see the success screen pop up and then it will ask you to start setting up the zones. So with the different zones here, you have quite a few options. You can select the type of sprinkler head, the type of grass, the placement of where it is in the yard. You can also take individual pictures to set for each zone, which I think is pretty cool. So you know which zone is firing off when you set it. So we're just gonna go ahead and Select the first zone and make sure it runs properly. I like how it gives you enough time to double check to make sure each of these zones are firing off properly. All right, that one's good. So we'll go ahead and go to the next one. Go ahead and do the same thing with zone two. And as you can see, there's a little light that blinks on the ratio that corresponds to each zone. So that little indicator light is basically a little status light to let you know what's going on, uh, that the device is trying to run that specific zone. So right here, you can put in the description of the zone. Obviously, we're not gonna call it zone two just call this one flower bed and see here we can select between different types of flowers like I said you know we can select different sprinkler heads different soil type we can also select how often it gets Sun and the grade of the the yard as well I'll just go ahead and do a couple more of these real quick I think you guys pretty much get the general gist All right, so as you can see here, all 16 zones show up. We'll go ahead and skip to the next menu. So here you can see the different watering settings and we're gonna go ahead and set up a schedule real quick. You can select from different types of schedules. You can select which zones you want to fire off as part of the schedule. And then we'll go ahead and type a schedule name in here. We'll just call it daily watering schedule. And from here you can select different types of schedules and here's where their smart cycle starts to come into play with the watering intelligence and then here you can just see how long each zone is set to water we'll go ahead and finish that out and then you're all set here's a look at the different zones you can go in individually and enable or disable a zone as needed. We'll just go ahead and disable all of the ones at the bottom since we don't need those. And then here you can see the schedule start stop times. Okay, so here you can select the weather station. You can also adjust the settings that will allow you to skip a cycle. And that's pretty much it. There's some other features in here we'll talk about a little bit more when we get to the actual uh, website. But you can play around and look in here once you get it all configured. So now we've got all of our wiring completed. We have our device configured. It's ready to go. Uh, we can do manual waterings from the station here. Uh, there's a play button, play stop button, and the up down arrows that allow you to cycle between the different zones. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. 
So let's go ahead and select zone one and see if we get water. Perfect. So now that we know that zone one is working, we can go ahead and get ready to close everything up here. Just go ahead and put the cover on and then we will go inside and check out the website. Okay, so now we will head over to the Ratio website where we can take a look at the web interface and we will see how it's very similar to the mobile phone and tablet app. So you're just gonna open your browser and go into the address bar and type in www.ratio.com. Once that page loads up, you're gonna go ahead and click on login in the top right corner. And then from here, you're gonna put in your login information. Obviously, I'm gonna block out my username and password. I don't want you guys trying to turn on my sprinklers while I'm not home. Once you're in, you can take a look around and see the first few options you have on the left hand side. You have the option to delay your watering and put the sprinkler system in standby mode. You have the home screen, which we're on. You can look at the schedule. You can make adjustments to the zones. You can see the history, controller settings, weather intelligence, pretty much all of the features that you have on the mobile app. It's almost identical. Up here, we have the weather schedule. And as you can see, it's supposed to rain most of the week. So the weather intelligence is already kicked in and it's only scheduling it to water the yard on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week because Monday is supposed to be sunshine. And the way I've noticed the weather intelligence works, um, so it'll skip days on its own and it'll still plan to water at least twice a week unless you actually do get heavy rain. And what I mean by that is sometimes for most of these days, you may get a 40 to 50% chance of rain, but you may only have between 30 and 60% coverage of the area that they say it's gonna rain in. So what that means is if it doesn't rain in your specific area, the ratio will detect based on whichever weather station you have it configured for, and it will water the yard, or will add an additional watering so that your yard isn't starved for water, but it will also take them away so that you, your yard isn't saturated which was a problem that I initially had with the sprinkler system that did not have any type of weather intelligence or any type of integration with it. Okay, so below that you can see the daily watering schedule on the days that it do run, uh, run is from 1.47 a.m. to about 3.26 a.m. Down below you can see the time it's been used thus far. You can see if there's any weather intelligence skips or any time that's actually been saved. Another cool feature about this, you can actually download these schedules or you can download the history and it'll show you basically all of the events that have happened. For those of you who really want to, you know, get in depth here, there's there's plenty of features and plenty of options for you to explore. But I want to try to keep it simple for those who don't want to go that far down the rabbit hole, so to speak. So we'll take a look at the zones. These are the same zones we set up on the phone earlier. Uh, like I said, here's your schedule. Another cool feature, if you do have a yard person or someone who maintains your yard, you can actually share access to that person. And then they can go in and do manual waterings if they're out there, you know, cutting the grass or whatever, and they notice that your yard's a little starved. Say you're on vacation, you can share access with a family member. If they notice that, you know, your, your yard isn't getting watered appropriately. But for the most part, as long as you're using the weather, weather intelligence, it'll kick in and it'll do most of the things that you need it to do. Like, you know, I have it set here to not water if it gets point one to five inches of rain it will also not water if 
there's a wind over 20 miles an hour. It will also not water if the temperature drops below 35 degrees. So those are all good options to have and you can kind of just set it and forget it for the most part. But for those who don't want to relinquish that much control to an automated system, like I said, you can do the manual runs, you can do the quick time runs, you can pass that access over to someone else. Another cool thing I want to talk about as far as the ratio is concerned is the integration with other smart home applications. For example, you can integrate this with Samsung Smart Things, you can integrate this with Wink, you can integrate this with Ift, you can integrate this with Alarm.com, you can integrate this with your Google Assistant, your Amazon Echo, or your Nest. So if you have any of those other platforms, you can actually integrate it into those systems and that will help you to reduce you know the apps that you log into so so this guy's pretty well integrated with all the major systems with the exception of the Apple home kit sorry Apple so we won't go too much further into this um, I just wanted to show you guys how the website looked if you want a little bit more in-depth uh, coverage of this I may do a follow-up video just let me know down in the comments what you guys think All right, everybody, that's going to be it for the Ratio Smart Sprinkler Controller. If you like this product and want to pick it up for yourselves, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified anytime I post new material. See you guys on the next one.